one of the pioneering exceptions was Bob Parry. And when I <clears throat> first got to know Bob, not very well in the beginning, I got to know Bob much better, uh, only because we were living on different sides of the Atlantic, um, when I began to write for him. And I enjoyed that very much as I enjoy it writing for you, Joe, but writing for Bob, it was almost like writing, <laughs> it was like writing for a newspaper again. It was fun. Uh, and it, you know, there was a to and fro and there was an understanding of what the words were about. The man was a real journalist. You know, it comes often with old fashioned journalists, but not old fashioned, he was a real journalist. There are so many fake journalists now. And they've been for, always been fake journalists, of course. Let's, let's not demonize the younger generation, please. John, you, uh, you've described journalism today as Vichy journalism. Yes. Just explain that and what roles uh, does a website like Consortium News and other well, alternative sites have to come as a remedy for this, if, if it is. Well, Vichy journalism is is my little insult for those who are um, those who are the echoes, as they're often called, the stenographers of governments. And during the Vichy years in France, there were plenty of them. They misreported the war. They lied about uh, what the Germans were doing. They collaborated. Collaboration is probably the key word, if not collusion. And when you look at the Assange case, there's been so much collaboration and collusion. I was reading a report by the excellent FAIR organization. Um, about uh, its headline, Farcical Coverage of Julian Assange's Farcical Hearing. Uh, there you have collaboration. That's Vichy journalism. It's, it's, uh, it, it, I mean, if, if journalism is anything, you are an agent of people, not power. You can be all those things. You can be, I'm not sure you can be entirely impartial. I don't agree with all that, but I think you can do everything you possibly can to find out the truth as much as you can and do it honestly and do it in good faith. These people don't. The BBC reporter came to the Old Bailey during during the Julian Assange trial. And uh, when he was asked, well, what are you doing? Are you coming back tomorrow? And he said, no, it's, it's repetitive. <laughs> this, is, this is the major broadcaster in this country. And he described <clears throat> what has rightly been called the trial of the century as repetitive. And they didn't come back. And every day, this extraordinary, as you know, Joe, Consortium News was uh, one of the few to have reported it live, to given, to provided that public service to people wanting to know about the trial of the century, but you wouldn't know looking at the so-called mainstream. Having said that, I do think it's, it's a waste of breath to keep on and on about the mainstream. They are part of the problem. I grew up uh, in the mainstream. I've reported in the mainstream. All my career has been in the mainstream. And unfortunately, that's what it has taught me. We've come to a point where the Perhaps Bob Parry came to 25 years ago, where there wasn't a space for him. 
there wasn't a space for an honest reporter, a without fear or favor reporter. Uh, when I started here in Fleet Street, as they used to call the British press, yes, of course, it was owned by all these moguls and it was conservative, but there were spaces and they allowed in Mavericks. In fact, Mavericks brought them distinction, awards and prizes and scoops. That's gone. That's gone completely. Um, and, and that's why Bob's setting up Consortium News was so important. And that Bob, um, his family, Diane and Matt and Sam and kept him, helped to keep him going. Um, and why, going back, the story of Gary Webb is such a, a chilling, uh, important story for all of us to understand. Because basically what Bob was writing about was, yes, Iran Contra, but it was cocaine Contra. And that was Webb's story. It was cocaine. The story was, of course, the CIA was shoving cocaine into the United States. It was a huge story. And when Webb was vindicated by the CIA's Inspector General, which only, as far as I know, only Bob reported and made sense of and wrote about and kept an eye on and as Diana suggested, went through the documents, you know, whereas the press at the time reported a, a CIA press release, which was meant to be, which was of course meant to be a decoy, because the real story was buried in the actual report, the Inspector General's report, that vindicated Webb, vindicated everything that Bob uh, had done on that particular story. Um, so I think we should celebrate Bob Parry and, and celebrate those who aspire to be the Bob, Bob Parrys, but we should never think that there is a, there is a nice Columbia School of Journalism media out there just waiting for, <laughs> um, clean cut, nice people, honest journalists to arrive and get their jobs. Uh, when I spoke with Cy Hirsch and Bob Fisk at um, Columbia uh, a few years ago, I felt an absolute atmosphere of hostility. And that's particularly to Fisk and me. Uh, we were going too far. We were going much too far. Bob Parry went too far. I salute him.